Welcome to Authentic UTV. I'm your host, Michelle Arbeau. Joining us today is special guest, Treva Etienne. Treva, welcome to the show. Welcome, thank you. Thank you, Treva. Hello. So Treva, in your own words, what does it mean to you to be your authentic self? Um, well, I guess being your authentic self means that you are walking and talking as you breathe it and as you see it. And if it means that you upset people on that path or you enlighten people on that path or you make people happy or um, you give them the truth in whatever form they receive it, um, I think that's about as authentic as you can be. And I think the challenge is to stay that, be that, continue to trust that, have faith in that self of you despite it not bringing the results you might think it should bring in your life or bringing in the right people that you think might give you the results you deserve or the things you think you've earned um, and I think just somehow understanding a sense of self that isn't even authentic it's just organic I like that yeah it's not that you're having to prove that you're this said person or this said person that people are saying it about you just in the way you are that's when you know that I think you're being authentically you when people are saying oh did you know that so and so does this oh I heard she did that and he did that. oh I know about that and people are just you're always on the the the, um, the topic of conversation based on your own organic self that people will then stand back and review as being authentic Organic. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's... So can you give us an example of how you're living your authentic you? <laughs> I'm sure you have many. <laughs> um, oh, God. Okay, well, a slight, okay, a quick example of my authentic self. I live in Los Angeles, and I don't like traffic. I think it's one of the most age-consuming, um, um, time-consuming, uh, it's the worst diet that we can consume in this city because traffic is bad for your health because it stresses you out, the, the environment you're breathing in, you're looking at metal in front of metal in front of metal, to the left of you, to the right of you, to the back of you, it's just you're surrounding in metal. And inside those cases of metal are agitated people, just as yourself, always somewhere to go, some on the phone, some listening to music, some not, some banging the radio because it won't give them any music. Um, and my authentic self in that situation needs to find a shortcut. I just have to find a shortcut because I look at the clock, I look at my life ticking away for another two hours if I don't get out of this four or five traffic. I know they say about the four or five, it takes you four or five hours to get anywhere, which is why they call it the four or five. <laughs> it's true, did you know that? That's what they say. Um, so in my authentic self, I'm shortcut Charlie. I like to take the shortcuts. So I will, organically get off the next exit, not knowing where it will lead me, and somehow sniff with my organic GPS, which is north or south, U-turn it if I have to, U-turn again if I have to, ask if need be, and somehow find um, some um, route that's alternative to where I'm going. If I, if I know I'm going north, I just go, okay, just keep driving that way. Even if you're zigzagging through quiet streets, whatever, just know that you're always, you're, you're going with Pico. You're just going west on this street. <laughs> yes. You're not staying on Pico. You're just keep going. Yeah. And somehow you'll skip maybe five or six blocks where it may have calmed down a little. So when you come out and you find Pico, it's at a different point. You've, and that's me. So that's, a, that's an authentic, organic, self-confessed, way of how I survive in this town. I take shortcuts. Even if it means getting lost, even if it risks meeting more traffic sometimes, which is then another challenge that you have to, but with the clock ticking and time being of the essence um, about how much we spend doing things, I'd like to try and know that if I'm listening to my 70s music in the car, that um, I'm not listening to it like this, stressing out, going, you know, and looking at people stressing out and people screaming at their phones or screaming at their dogs or, you know, that I'm listening to it with a kind of 
are moving. There's there's mobility under these four wheels. They're not just like you do, which I see people on, you know, the ibuprofen and, you know, the Prozac, and it's just not good. It's not good for driving. <laughs> Makes you dizzy. Um, so you're asking me, how does authenticity um, help me create organically as an artist? That was your question, right? Yes. So let me think. Um, um, well, I think... I think one of the things that make you an artist is the fact that you are coming from an authentic place. That somehow you've rejected a nine to five lifestyle, which you probably tried at some point in your life, which in some organic way just didn't work for you. You know, you had family pressures, go get a job, do something, don't be lazy, whatever. So you've gone out and you've tried to jump into the nine to five way of being. And for some reason it didn't gel for various reasons. So I think that authenticity that then keeps you committed to being an artist in whatever way that is, fashion, design, music, film, theater, books, whatever your um, channel is, um, I think that once you've chosen that and you've really committed to being in it for the art, not for the uh, commerciality of it, not for the money of it, because I think there's a difference when you're doing it for the money. I think a lot of time it shows, and people get swept up in the hysteria of that quick hit, pit stop, drive by bite, if you like, mm -hmm. of what it represents. But if you really look at it, it doesn't really have a longevity, and the true art, in my opinion, even if it doesn't hit the ball straight out of the park the first time, it takes years sometimes for art to ferment like a wine, or like a flower. It's years for people to really look at a, a Picasso and go, you know, I never saw that before, or find a movie and go, oh, I've... and you know, people remember things and they discover things by accident and then suddenly that 30, 40 year old thing is now suddenly art. And it's now trendy, and it's now, well, let's all examine Citizen Kane. What was Orson Welles really doing when he had shadows and created all those shadows in the photography? And, oh, he started a trend. Oh, that's what he was... And people don't realize that until... Because art takes time. It's like a good meal sometimes. You know, when you're eating something good, it takes a while before the pepper hits the back and you start... And you're taking stuff out of your teeth because it's savory and it's... It's rich, and I think that's true art, that you're not making it for a mainstream collective, you're making it for your own individual artistic collective. And I think authenticity as an artist comes from that place, and if you're able to um, stay true to that authentic place, which is difficult in this world of fast-moving cars and money and iPhones and everything getting now and it's everything so immediate now no one yes. has time to say hello to your face they say hello on a text they yes. won't say it, say it to your face anymore yeah. or they won't say goodbye they'll say goodbye with a abbreviation smiley face so you're reading a goodbye now it's not so everything's changed now and I think if you can keep that authentic organic way that we were brought up because we're all brought up with manners I don't care if you were poor and didn't have any siblings around there was always someone in your life space that taught you about manners there was an etiquette and even if you choose to reject that and think that this is the way to behave somehow someone that taught you manners is always in the back of your you know that's not the way to drive that's not the way to behave that's not the way to sit that's not the way to eat food that's not the way you know yes we have and some of us reject that because we think it's cool or this is who I am, I want to be individual. And I think that um, artistic authenticity, for me anyway, what's kept me going is the fact that I remember uh, manners. I remember manners. And I remember what manners give me and what I give when I present manners. And I think if you put manners in art and you put manners in business and you put manners in how you treat people, and if you put manners in race, and in commerce, and in religion, manners. 
because what's missing out of all these elements is manners. So when you go to the bank, they don't have any manners anymore. They want your money, they stamp you, get out. And the church tries to keep some kind of mannerful relationship with, the, with its historical text and its modern day text. But because the church is battling now with what other religions think of it or each other, the respect and the manners in terms of how people communicate now and the media, it's all got mixed and so there's no manners in anything. There's no manners in how you present a woman to, to a young boy. It's just, this is what's presentable. Or how you present a man to a young girl. This is what's presentable. There's nothing mannerful about it. It's just, this is what we do now. And I think people have got swept up with that. And it will come back because when you look at breeding young people or children, you want to give them something that you didn't have, which is manners. And you want to teach them manners so that they go out in the world and they get manners back because it's being reciprocated from them. So I think if you keep the artistic authenticity in anything you do, which is what I've tried to do, and I've gone kind of around the yellow brick road a little, but um, um, yeah, I think that's what's kept me interested in the things that I'm doing as an artist, things that have some moral integral value. It doesn't matter how dark or strange or violent or disturbing it is. And I come from stuff that represents that creatively as well. The things I want to do have those elements in them, but they also have um, elements of love and compassion and community and integration and um, manners. Thank you, Trevor. I mean, it's always wonderful to talk to you. You always have a unique perspective, and you're wise beyond your years, for sure. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you.